Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we're taking a look today at what I think is probably the best value for a Windows PC at the moment, and a lot of you wrote in to tell me to get this one for a review, so I did. This is the HP 14AN013NR. It doesn't even have a name, uh, but it is $199 and comes complete with a very shiny but very nice 14-inch 1080p IPS display. It's unheard of to get an IPS display at a price point like this, especially on a Windows computer, but it looks like HP has pulled it off and it's powered by an AMD processor versus the Intel chip that is in the HP Stream 14 that actually costs more than this one does on Amazon at the moment. So we'll be putting this thing through its paces in just a second. But I do want to mention in the interest of full disclosure that I purchased this with my own funds. So all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review and no one is reviewing this content before it is posted. And this computer is powered by an AMD AMD processor versus an Intel processor that the stream models have. It's an AMD E27110 APU at 1.8 gigahertz. It's a quad core chip. You get four gigabytes of RAM and 32 gigabytes of eMMC storage built in. And what's interesting is you can upgrade this one, which you can't do on the stream. So a lot of people on uh, Amazon in the review section have posted some detailed photos of the motherboard. Uh, so you can upgrade the RAM and it looks like you can actually slide in a SATA hard drive, a small one, maybe an SSD or something, because although so there's no optical drive on this computer. On this side, there's room for one inside the case. So you might be able to slip something in there and get it going. A few folks on uh, the review section have actually found some success in doing that. This is not fanless, so you will hear a fan going on, especially when you're playing back YouTube video like I'm doing now. I've got a 1080p 60 video here, and it's working just fine with no drop frames. So I think from a overall performance standpoint, it feels uh, very similar to the Stream 14, but with a dramatically improved screen. And we'll get into some of the performance again in a few minutes here. So now, now, on the side, we're going to take a look at what ports we've got. A VGA here, Gigabit Ethernet, a full-size HDMI port, and two USB ports. This one is USB 3. Uh, this one over here is USB 2. You also have an analog headset adapter over here. On the other side, you've got another USB 2.0 port, as well as lights to indicate what the computer is up to. So the power light is here, and the hard drive light is over there. And you've got a Kensington lock to uh, lock it down on a desk. Uh, the battery is down here. It's removable. I guess you could probably buy another battery and keep one charged while the uh, other one is in use. And what I found with this is that the battery life is pretty bad. So you're only going to get about four or five hours of battery life if you're lucky, uh, and probably far less than that if you're watching movies and other things. So that's one area where the streams have an advantage, but uh, there is a price to be paid to get your price down to 200 bucks and a screen of this caliber. So I think they made some sacrifices there. And on the front here, there is a full-size SD card slot, and the SD card sticks out a little bit, but because it's in the front of the laptop, here and not the side, uh, you might be able, be able to get away with keeping it inside the laptop a little bit longer uh, for augmenting some of its onboard storage. Now, overall weight on this is about 3.86 pounds or 1.75 kilograms. Not too heavy, not too bad again for the price here. I'm not complaining about uh, portability all that much. Keyboard isn't too bad either. You've got nice full-size keys here, maybe slightly smaller than uh, what I saw on the stream, but still very typable. They are a little springier than I remember the stream keyboard being, but uh, not a bad keyboard experience overall. All. The trackpad's kind of cool because it's just melded right into the casing here. There's no click pad though, so you have to hit these buttons down here to register a click. Uh, but of course, you could do the uh, tap to click on the pad if you wish to do that. So now let's take a look and see how it performs. We'll do some web browsing real quick. We've got my YouTube channel up here playing some videos, no problem there. You saw that uh, 1080p 60 performance earlier with no uh, drop frames. I'll hit up the New York Times, for example, and we'll see how fast everything springs up here. Uh, not a bad experience. Wireless AC is built in, so it supports the latest wireless protocols. And uh, with a 1080p display, you've got a lot of uh, room here to play with. Now what I've done is turn the screen scaling down. By default, that scaling will be up, so things will look really nice and sharp, uh, and maybe a little larger than what you're seeing here by uh, its default configuration. But uh, overall, even with some of these ads loading up and whatnot, it's been a fairly decent browsing experience. And I am not complaining about that at all. So I think from the standpoint of performance, it feels to me uh, like the Stream 11 and 14 felt. It's a lower end processor. It's not the fastest thing in the world, but it is more than adequate to get web browsing done. And uh, my camera, unfortunately, is not doing the display any justice. You get a really nice uh, screen here with really great viewing angles and a lot more resolution than what you might see on the 14 
13 inch stream 14 because that screen is only a 720p display uh, this one is 1080p so a lot more resolution for the same price it really uh, you really can't go wrong there if battery life is uh, not an issue for you now i did run the octane benchmark test which gives us an idea as to how well it performs uh, doing all the things that a web browser does and we ran that in google chrome and got a score of 7174 uh, that's compared to 8379 on the new hp stream 11 that we tested just recently so on paper uh, the hp stream 11 and 14 will perform better but as far as i'm concerned just using it it feels about the same it's a pretty marginal difference in uh, my own experience with it versus what the benchmark says but uh, on paper at least the hp stream might have a slight edge over this one but let's take a look now at some word processing so here's our newsletter template in Microsoft Word, and you can see it renders in maybe slightly slower than what we saw on the Stream 14, but really nothing uh, terrible here. So I think you'll be able to get all of your Microsoft Office documents done uh, pretty effectively on here, which is maybe a slight bit of lag over the Intel version, but I'm not really going to complain about it all that much here. You can see all the text flow here is uh, working just fine, and we're able to uh, work with this document pretty efficiently. So no worries on the Office side of things either. But let's take a look now at some gaming, beginning with Minecraft. All right, here we are running Minecraft. This is the original Java version, which most people still run, and I have the Optifine Performance Enhancing Plugin installed on it to give us a frame rate boost. And uh, we're seeing pretty good frame rates here, sometimes as high as 50 or 60 frames per second, actually, depending on the landscape that we're walking through. So uh, really good performance out of the AMD graphics on here. This is not a dual channel computer. It's only single channel. So I think you would actually see better performance if they did uh, have a dual channel RAM configuration on this computer. But I think for uh, any casual Minecraft player, this is probably more than adequate. Uh, this is also running at 1080p. The HP stream, when we tested it, runs only at 720p. So, uh, you know, resolution for resolution, this does perform better, at least with Minecraft. And I would say that's also going to be the case with other casual low-end games. Let's take a look at something a little bit more demanding, Counter-Strike Go. All right, so here we are running Counter-Strike Go. I did turn down a lot of the settings and reduce the resolution to 720p to see if I could squeak out a 30 frames per second uh, experience here. And I'm close to that. I'm getting anywhere from 15 up to like 27, 28 frames per second. So it's probably not going to be fast enough for a lot of uh, you professional Counter-Strike players out there, but you can run some games on here. I would take a look on Steam and look at a lot of the 2D games like Shovel Knight that we looked at in the, in the stream review. Uh, those games run pretty well, as well as older games that may have been out maybe six or seven years ago. Those might run okay on here as well, but the newer stuff I would leave to a more expensive gaming PC. And on the 3 d Mark CloudGate test, we got a score of 2,326. It does put it well ahead of what we saw on the HP Stream 11, which is the same guts that you'll find on the HP Stream 14. A big boost in that test, though, came from the physics test, and that is because this machine has a quad-core processor, and the HP Stream has a dual-core processor. So more cores means you can do more things at once, and the physics test really tests that uh, CPU quite heavily, and that's why I think you're seeing a better score on that machine. Otherwise, Otherwise, you're not going to notice that much of a difference, especially if you're trying to play a game like Counter-Strike or some other modern AAA title. All right, one last thing to check out on here, and that is Kodi. I've got my HEVC file that we always test on here. This is an H.265 4K file, and this really chokes on here. So I think this AMD chipset uh, lacks the ability to efficiently decode these H.265 files here. It's really uh, not a good playback experience at all, so I would caution you on those. Uh, but the Blu-ray MKV stuff uh, does work very nicely, in fact, and that screen is, a, is light years ahead of what you'll get on the HP Stream 14. So this is a very good... Uh, moving wa movie watching experience. Even if it looks a little cold on camera to you right now, I can tell you looking at it, it looks really good. So I think if you're watching movies on here, this is definitely going to be the pick over the HP Stream 14. But the one downside to movie watching on this is the audio. There are two speaker holes here at the bottom. There are stereo, but it doesn't sound all that great. It almost sounds like the sound is coming out of the keyboard versus the bottom of the computer. Uh, so it's very muffled, really not uh, the best audio quality you'll get. So you'll definitely want to plug in some headphones or something to get the best experience. But if you are looking at this one and maybe one of those HP Stream laptops, uh, this I think is a better value, especially because of the display. Uh, you get four gigs of RAM, you have some upgradeability, which you won't get on the stream. So I think there's uh, probably a case to be made here by uh, maybe taking a hit on battery life in exchange for better display and upgradeability while still having uh, comparable performance to those HP Stream laptops. And if you don't like the color of the casing on the HP Stream, they're either like bright blue or pink or purple. Uh, this one is certainly a little more conservative in its color and it might uh, be more attractive to walk around with. So I think, uh, you know, all in, I can live with the battery life limitations on this because uh, this really is a display 
uh, worth spending 200 bucks on if you are in the market for a Windows PC. This is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including Gold Level supporter Eric. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.